Well, hello guys, here Mr. G with another video. This time we're going to be doing questions for the grade 12, grade 10 and 11 for all the grades um, that can help you to prepare for the upcoming exam, which is going to, well, the exams will start in two, three weeks. And I hope it helps. It's like the last push. I was a little bit away from the videos. I was um, busy with other uh, stuff. But anyway, we're going to start. And this one was a question paper done on the Eastern Cape in 2023 September. And the question, the question two is the first question we're going to answer and it say a track of mass 1300 kilogram is connected to a car of mass uh, 950 kilogram by means of an inextensible massless rope uh, um, and pull the car and pull the car along a straight horizontal rough road so it means that if there is a rough road it means there is friction okay the engine of the track applies a force of 9000 newton to move the track combined to the left as shown in the diagram so there is a force that is acting on this a car which is coming from the engine let's fix that line um, there is a force that is coming from the engine and that force we're going to call it force and is pulling uh, the track as well as the uh, car this force is equal to 9000 a newton i'm not going to write the direction because i can see it here with the vector i just uh, draw there okay so i'm not going to write the you know what let's write here left because then i'll get a comment saying that i didn't write the direction okay now to move the track uh, the track experiences a constant frictional force of 300 and uh, 3500 newton so there is a frictional force applied on this uh, track which is equal to 3500 a newton all right and that force is going to be to the right i'm going to write here to the right and that is the frictional force for the uh, track we're speaking about the track the track and the car move at constant velocity so velocity is constant for both of them and that means that the acceleration is equal to zero there is not acceleration ignore the rotational effect of the wheel and that is quite important because otherwise things are a little bit different here and let us say that the track comes to a sudden stop the car will continue moving at constant velocity and that is correct if this track will move the car will continue moving uh, to the front due to the a property of inertia now which physics which physics law um, did this learn apply to have or to make this statement it will be a newton newton first law of motion nothing to say or law of the inertia the car move a forward due to the property inertia now what is the law that best explain this one is the law of inertia of newton first law say when an object um if an object the, the objects continue in a state of moving at constant velocity or at rest and let's say unbalanced force acting on it so the car the two of them were moving at constant velocity the track suddenly stopped and then the car will continue moving in the previous state which was the uh, constant velocity okay now draw a label free body diagram for all the forces acting on the track and something important here which i mentioned previously there are five marks for that one and therefore there will be five forces guys it should be five forces so let's draw this one real fast and let's do it on this point here and this is question 2.2 so let's do it in this small corner this one is going to be the track now what forces are acting on the track the ones that you know because they mentioned them are going to be the force that is coming from the engine that one we're going to call it f for force you can uh, write applied force i don't think that will be an issue there is you uh, do that but let's call it force what are the forces you know the friction there is also friction pointing to the uh, back okay that is frictional force pointing to the back now what other force are uh, quite simple here that is the normal remember the normal is the force that the surface exert on an object that is on it and is perpendicular to the surface that is normal force and there is also a um, gravitational force or weight i am going to write w for weight and that is a straight toward the center of the earth in this case will be pointing down but there is still one more force which is the force that the card exert 
on the track through the rope. So that is the last force and that is going to be called a tension. I'm going to call it tension and I'm going to write it um, when I change the color just on top of the other one. That one I'm going to call it tension. So now you can see we have one, two, three, four and five forces. That is quite simple. Note, what is F a little bit longer than the other two? Because when you add the other two forces must be equal to the length of the force F because it is moving at constant velocity. I hope this is clear, but you can obviously write comment. Question 2.3, calculate the tension in the rope connecting the track and the car and calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between the car and the rod. So the first one is to calculate the tension on in, in the rope connecting the track and the canal. This question, when you have such a question, always, so let's write here question 2.3.1, always attempt to do it with a simultaneous equation for both of them. Now, it doesn't mean that you are going to have to use the simultaneous equation. It means that you may have to use it, okay? So, let's start. We have two objects, so we are going to apply Newton's law to both of them. Let's move this number a little bit to the left. I'm going to save space here. So, we are going to, first of all, work for the track. And I am going to write here for track. Now, guys, I want to mention also something important uh, here something really important here. When you write an exam, remember you are not just writing for you. The people that are going to mark your exams need to understand what you answer. Otherwise, they will struggle and they may take away marks that you actually have because it's difficult to understand. So work as clear as you can. And I'm not speaking about a beautiful handwriting because my handwriting is not that good, but organized so everyone can understand what is going on there. Now, for the track, and I'm going to apply Newton first law. Now, why Newton first law? Let's uh, fix it here. Newton first law. Why am I going to apply Newton's first law? Because the object is moving at constant velocity. Newton's first law, you apply it when the object moves at constant velocity or when the object is at rest or equilibrium. So in this case, I'm going straight to write that F net is equal to zero. That is Newton's first law. Law. I am working on the track and luckily for me, I have here all the forces acting. All right. Now, what is important? The direction. We have forces acting to the right. We have forces acting to the left. So we must select the direction. However, the object is moving to the left. So it is convenient to select left as positive. So I'm going to write left is positive positive. It means all the forces pointing to the left will be positive and all the forces pointing to the right will be negative. So we are coming here and we said what forces we have here. We have the force from the engine which is positive minus tension because it's pointing to the back minus frictional force because it's pointing to the right and I say left is positive and all that is equal to zero. Now is the part when we are going to substitute what we have. What is the force is given to us? It is 9,000. There we go. How much is the tension? We are looking for it. And how much is the frictional force? It is going to be 3,500. So all that is equal to zero. If you rearrange, you get here that tension will be equal to 9,000 minus 3,500. And therefore, we get that the tension is going to be equal to 5,500 Newton. That is the answer for this question. Okay, I think I'm, I'm going quite low, but if there is any comment, please, I'll be more than pleased to help you. Question 2.3.2. Now, question 2.3.2 say calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction between the car and the rod. So we are going to work for the car 
and the road for the car what is going on to the a car so to do this one we're going to a new page and we are going to start everything from that question the first thing i'm going to do is the free body diagram for the car so i'm going to write here for the car so i get an idea of what is going on there now what forces are acting on the a car well first of all there is tension the extension pointing to the left, this is the force that the track is exerting on the car through the rope, okay? That is the tension. There is frictional force pointing to the right, and it must be more or less same length because it's moving at constant uh, velocity. This is frictional force. There is normal force. And there is weight so those are the forces acting on the um, car now in this question they ask to calculate the kinetic coefficient of friction that is what they want there is a formula frictional force is equal to kinetic coefficient of friction multiplied by normal if we apply this formula which we can indeed apply we need or we have two unknowns there said a frictional force we don't know how much is it and normal force we don't know how much is it so we have to get both of them now how are we going to get frictional force we are going to apply newton um first law to the a car so we're going to come here and we say for the car i'm going to write it only once so i'm not going to rewrite for the car i'm going to say f net is equal to zero why newton first law why newton first law the object is moving at constant velocity what forces are acting there i'm still going to say here a uh, left positive all right and let me highlight that part there so if left is positive what forces we have there tension minus frictional force and that is equal to zero all right now tension if we rearrange it's equal to frictional force we're looking for friction the tension guys we did calculate it previously in the uh, first question so the magnitude of the tension was the same therefore frictional force is equal to 5500 newton okay this is the magnitude of the frictional force all right this is magnitude so please remember that one there okay and now we have to calculate normal now where is the normal guys the normal is in the y-axis so we are going to apply newton first law again in the y-axis be careful i don't like when learners learn that normal force is equal to weight because it is not like that so i'm going to write here in y-axis you do not have to write all this all right in the y-axis f net is equal to zero all right what forces are acting there there is normal and there is weight they pointing in different direction so i am going to write here up positive just for control and then we continue it's equal to zero therefore normal in this situation is equal to weight in other words is equal to m g and if we substitute we have that the normal is equal to 950 which is the mass of the car multiplied by 9,8 you get now the normal here so the normal force will be 9310 newton okay now that we have this one we may come there back to the formula or in which there is a kinetic coefficient of friction and substitute everything there so we have here now we're going to take this formula there i'm going to rewrite it just in case somebody is uh, or get lost some somewhere the frictional force is 5500 equal to kinetic coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal which is 9310 a uh, newton and when you do calculate this one you should get that the kinetic coefficient of friction will be equal to 0, 0.59 not unit guys this is the answer for this 
question. It's quite simple. You do not have to do it this way. You can write everything in one equation. I think it's better like this. So you make sure everything is um, there. Okay. So the only question left is question 2.4. They say the rope between the track and the car suddenly breaks, like like the learner spoke before in question 2.1. Eh? And the car continues to move to the left before coming to red. So eventually will stop moving. Calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the car after the rope breaks. So it's question 2.4. We have to calculate the acceleration of the uh, car. Um, I don't want to read. This is small, small space. So let's do it in the new page. So here we are, and this is question 2.4. 2.4. It's not a difficult, guys. The free body diagram will be similar to the one we have here, just with slightly different. There won't be tension no more. So the only forces that will be acting on the car will be now the frictional force pointing to the right. There will be normal still which we did calculate and does not change, and there is weight. Okay, these are the three forces acting on the car when the rope breaks. Now, in this case, we do have to apply Newton's second law because the object is accelerating. So now it's equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. What forces are acting on the x-axis? So there is now a frictional force, which is a negative, Frictional force, because it's pointing to the right, is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. And just in case, I'm going to write here left positive. Why left? Because the object is moving to the left. That is why frictional force is negative here. Now, I want to point something out. The frictional force was already, the frictional force was already calculated there and is going to be the same. Note the following. Frictional force is equal to kinetic coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal. All right? The kinetic coefficient of friction is going to be the same because it depends only on the surface and we did not change the surface. And the normal is going to be the same and therefore the frictional force will also be the same so it was calculated already all we have to do is to substitute and this one is equal to negative 5500 and negative because of the direction equal to the mass which is 950 multiplied by acceleration when you get the answer you will get a negative answer which is equal to minus 5,79 meters per second square now important the question said calculate the magnitude magnitude do not have direction so the final answer should be 5,79 meters per second square this should be the final answer guys we are done with question two i hope it helped if it helped please thumb up don't be stingy thumb up subscribe for the channel uh, write comments i'll see you next time mr g here